hallelujah. I got some, I don't want to do that all the time. <laughs> oh, shit, okay. I carefully set up the camera to have this door in the background. Because <laughs> my last video was a lot of chaotic glory. I must have watched that intro like 30 times and laughed so hard. It was such a good video. Oh man. It just shows like in my weakness he is totally made strong. That goes for all of us. In our weakness he is made strong. Oh, speaking of doors, uh, you know, Jesus Christ is the door to the sheep. You know, no one comes to the Father but through him. All creation came through the door. God just breathes or whatever he did through Jesus Christ. He created all things through the Word of God. He is the Word of God. He is God. He created everything through him. It's amazing. I was just remembering some uh, a car drive that I had. Holy Ghost. <laughs> My best friend. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I was just remembering a car, I was sitting in my car driving, but I had a car to uh, go pick up my daughter from school. And as I was driving, this incredible hunger to just to be with him forever came upon me. And I was praying in my heart and I said like, in the anointing, the anointing felt so good after I prayed this. And I was like, God, I just wanna be like, just crucify me to the door, you know? Just like those people in the Old Testament, they'd put it all through their ear and just nail it to the door. The servant, if they were to remain with their master for the rest of their lives. Come on, man, that's what we need. You wanna be, we, we wanna be slaves of Jesus Christ, his love slaves. And if you nail your ear to the door, that means you're gonna hear what the door is saying. <laughs> you gotta get a little bit closer, just like John. Just like John is leaning his ear on the beloved, you can feel the heartbeat of God just getting into the rhythm of heaven. You can feel him, he can sense in his spirit the love of God that passes all understanding, just pouring out of Jesus right into him. That's why when he wrote with authority the scriptures, he said, the one whom Jesus loves. He didn't say that out of arrogance or just hoping. It was out of the substance of having a relationship having his ear to the door. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. You know, come on. We can hear his voice. Of course we can hear his voice. But what is the ear? Is it just your flesh? Like that, that Old Testament was symbolic of a spiritual reality that we have in the new covenant. It's like he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the spirit is saying. So your ears are spirit now. Your ears are deep inside your spirit, man. That's why you gotta be renewed in the spirit of your mind to hear what the spirit is saying and get renewed in the spirit of your mind. But every word that he speaks is the washing water of the word. It just renews you in the spirit of your mind so you can comprehend him. You can be more sensitive to him and you can sense like just little wooings. He'll pull you somewhere and you're just like, he'll speak to you. Whereas in your flesh, like you, you don't have ears to hear. You're dull of hearing if you're in the flesh. Someone asked me, what is the flesh? It's the fallen nature of man. God came to bring us, you know, we, at first we were created in the image of God. God is spirit. And then mankind sinned, he partook of the knowledge of good and evil, and it was all about the brain, knowledge, you know. <laughs> Tree of life is experience. You taste the fruit. <laughs> but, uh, it's the flesh is the fallen nature, 666, it's the number of a man. It's the fallen nature of man. It's the serpent, dust, food, <laughs> your flesh, dust realm. But we're born again from above. We're born again of the spirit so we can hear what the spirit is saying. We can comprehend what the spirit is saying. Remember in the old covenant, it would say like, my ways are not your ways or my thoughts are not your thoughts. Like we, can, like we couldn't know the thoughts of God or know his ways, <clears throat> but now we do. It's all in Jesus Christ and who is baptized into the Lord is baptized into one spirit with the Lord. So you can actually hear his voice and it is spirit. And it's, it's like peace, love, all the fruits of the Holy Spirit, Galatians chapter five, if you want to more dig deeper into clarity of what it is. 
Anyways, I was saying to God, I want to be just crucified like to, with it, to you on the cross, you know. Jesus is the door. You go through Jesus into paradise. And just being nailed to that door is symbolic of being crucified with Christ so that you can hear what the Spirit is saying. If your flesh is like muffled up the voice of God, of course, there was, remember when God spoke? Here, let's just rewind everything. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Or whatever, you know, the father spoke this and then, uh, or he came out of the, the water, came out of the water. I can't remember the full exact scripture right now because it's always just off the top of my head. <laughs> I like to get in over my head, just like jump right into the deep waters and, you know, <laughs> depend on God. <laughs> Who cares what it looks like? Oh, I'll become a fool for Christ's sake, but whatever. And if it's wisdom, it's not its not any wisdom of mine. <laughs> it's coming from God. He gets all the glory. But anyways, this is my beloved son, who I'm well pleased. Uh, he, some said that they heard thunder. Others said that they, an angel spoke. And who, whoever had their hearts circumcised the, the most could hear the voice of God. They heard what he said. So there's different levels of hearing. There's different levels of like how much of you surrendered your heart and mind to Jesus Christ. You might say, well, I'm 100%. Well, your time tells me that. If it's 100%, then you're 24-7, mind of Christ on God. Like, I don't know anyone that's 24-7. <clears throat> that they're just fully radiating. Like, we're still growing into Christ. You know, oh, sometimes I just, like, I just... I, start, I use my natural mind and <laughs> try to figure things out. And then it's just like you stop and it's like it's the heart. You chew on things. You just meditate on it. You mulch on it and just let it just. And then God just breathes on it and it becomes a rhema. Why I chose this door backing is I just, just a thought popped in my mind before I was setting up my tripod. I didn't want it to fall over again. And like, oh, that door looks like a good spot. I'm like, man, Jesus is the door. Like all these different. Uh, parallels of the scriptures and my 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 encounters with God and so back to my encounter with God I was like God I just want to be crucified like in Christ I want to be just nailed to that door so I can hear your voice and instantly as I just symbolically just I just, oh, I just crucify myself into you you know I'm just like I'm no longer me living but Christ living through me I felt this 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 anointing it didn't it was not like the glory it was like this this oily sparkly life and it was not just like poured upon me it was coming through me as I'm driving in my car tears rolling down my cheeks I'm like oh when you're truly crucified with Jesus Christ he's the anointed one he, that his anointing will ooze through his entire body it's written that in the old covenant that uh, the anointing would drip down Aaron's beard where's it where, what's it gonna be covering his body he was just like a kind of like a foreshadow of the one who's to come it's like, you know, my, what did David say in Psalm 23? My head, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Uh, something about the head overflow. I can't even remember the scriptures right now. Holy Spirit, help me. Oh. There's some deep brevity in here. There's, uh, we'll go to Psalm 23. I got the most intense Bible in the world right here. This is like the 26 translation Bible. It's got 26 translations in here and it's like super heavy and super small words that I, I need Jesus to heal my eyes so I can read them all. But we're going to read it anyway. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm just going to read the regular stuff until I get to the good part. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the still waters. Oh, I like the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Uh, I'm taking out the thousand and the these just to make it you know, a little more understandable. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Right here. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. It's like, yeah, the anointing oil was on David. 
But who's the head of the body? Jesus said when he walked the earth, you know, the Son of Man has nowhere to lay, to rest his head. That's because his body wasn't on the earth yet. We had to be born again into him. One spirit with the Lord. He put, you, he, he's the head. We're the body. And when we're connected to the body, we can walk in that anointing to break every single yoke that comes up, that we come in contact with. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. It's an overflowing anointing. The cup of salvation that you drink, that we drink. Drink it, all of you. This is the blood of the covenant. Remember when you drink his blood? That's communion, heart to heart, spirit to spirit, being filled with the life of God. When you eat his flesh, that's the bread of his presence. This was broken. Remember when he gave the, the all the broken pieces to... He said uh, there was like 5,000 or something like that. He had two loaves and five fishes or something like that. And he broke all the bread. That brokenness is how we just receive it. Like when we fall on the rock and we're broken, you know, it's not like him falling on us and grinding us to power. But when we fall on the rock and we're broken, the fragrance of Christ comes out of us. That's a surrendered vessel to the Lord's use. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> When he broke all the bread and he, and he fed all those multitudes, that's symbolic of the only way that you can feed the multitudes. It's the bread of his presence. It's the bread of the manna come down from heaven. He prayed to the Father. It was blessed by Jesus. <laughs> Anything that's been touched by Jesus has the touch of Jesus in it is bread. Everything else is just knowledge of good and evil. <clears throat> I like this though, after my cup runneth over, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's like we are the house of the Lord now. He dwells in us and we dwell in Him. In my Father's house or many mansions or something like that. There's different dimensions in the Father. Different realities, planes of existence. We go from glory to glory. Talk, talking about doors today. In Revelation chapter 4, it says, like, I, I saw, I beheld a door standing open in heaven. What happened? He was already in the spirit. And then he, he said, come up here. He went higher in the spirit to another dimension in the spirit. But he was already in the spirit. So he was going from glory to glory in a visual way that we can read and understand in the book of Revelation. He was like, he was in the spirit. Of the Lord. He would turn around. He saw Jesus. Then he heard, heard Jesus and Jesus strengthened him. And. You know, and then he goes, Jesus gives this prophetic word for the churches. And then John chapter 4, he sees a door standing open in heaven. Saying, come up here and I'll show you even more, basically. And then he, he just goes in there and he starts seeing the throne. He sees the lamb. He sees the, you know, <laughs> the lion. And, uh, and his vision was different than the angels. Because both of them said, behold, the lion who is, you know, uh, the lion of the tribe of Judah and... And then uh, John looks over. I can't remember if the angel saw it or John saw it, but they both look at the same thing. One sees a lion of the tribe of Judah. The other one sees a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. Both of them look at the same thing, but they have different perceptions. Both were accurate, but different levels of le revelation and how we see. Different heights of revelation. Those angels have been there how many eons? John was only there, what, 2,000 years? Actually, when it's penned down, it was, you know, how long? He was, <laughs> I don't even think he was dead yet. He just got, he just went into visions and revelations of the Lord while his body was still in Patmos. Man, that tells me that we can have experiences with God. You know, even in our, if our body's in prison, in a prison cell, you know, Paul and Silas were in the prison worshiping God and they shook all the prison doors wide open. You know, the heaven of heavens cannot contain God. Where the Holy Spirit is Lord, there's freedom, and that freedom's contagious. Oh, but we just got to be crucified to that door. He's the door. He opens uh, ways where there is no way. Moses was blocked at the sea. You know, he had an entire nation with him. God commissioned Moses to lead them out of Egypt and to bring them into the promised land. Lead them out of bondage. Lead them out of the natural realm <laughs> into the spirit. I was listening to my audio Bible today. 
you can listen to it too today. I, I uploaded like the, the whole Amplified. This is this text to speech uh, lady reading it, but it's really good because I've been listening to the other version, Stephen B. Stevens, for so long and I just wanted to change and it was nice. But uh, when the manna came down from heaven, it, the, the Israelites were complaining. I think it was in Numbers. They're saying, I remember the garlic, I remember the, all these other the cucumbers that we had in Egypt in the world. And now we're like, we're fainting, we're dying here. With all we have is this manna. They were eating angel food. They wanted to have strengthened flesh. That's because it was just natural food. God was giving them spiritual food to renew them in the spirit of their mind so they can comprehend His voice and walk in His ways and know His ways. But they were like complaining and bitter. You know, God, <laughs> anyways, what I gather from that is like they, were, they wanted to be strengthened in their flesh because that's all they knew. But God wanted them to be strengthened with might in the inner man to hear what the Spirit is saying to Israel. <laughs> and they, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't handle the voice of God because they were too strong in the, in, in the flesh. They were too strong in the natural realm. You know, and it's, it, at first it's not, it's not easy to deny your flesh and just start, okay, what did God wants to do? But after you do it a couple times, you just deny yourself and just, you know, I'm going after God. It's not fasting, not doing ritualistic things. It's just one simple thing. Removing the distractions and putting 100% focus upon Him. It's something you can exercise daily. See how long you can go for. See how long you can set your affections on things above and remove them off the things of the earth. I don't know anyone that's 100%. Like, I mean, you can just, you know, last night I was playing a video game. And I was laughing with my daughter. We were playing video games on the iPad and we played it. Whatever. It's not, we weren't sinning or anything. We were just having fun. But, you know, I'm just saying, can you keep your mind locked on him while you're doing those things? Sometimes I forget. Other times when I, I just remember and then we just start, I start getting revelatory with her. <laughs> and we have a good time. <laughs> Children's Bibles are like just like explosive words of the Lord. You know? I posted them on my Facebook a couple times. Or the or the like God will speak to us, you know, through the children's Bibles. Oh, we need the door. All the promises are through the door. You know, all things are yours, but they're all through the door. You got to go through the door. Years ago, I saw this. A uh, vision of a door. <laughs> Talking about doors today, guys. Break on through to the other side. You know who sings that? The doors. My brother used to listen to that. He wasn't, you know, he was a, he wasn't saved at the time. And he'd always have that cranked in his in his room. You listen to the doors. Break on through to the other side. Now, you know how prophetic that is. <sighs> Come on, you got to go. You need the breakthrough anointing to break you out of the flesh into the Holy Ghost. <laughs> On the other side of the cross, you know? <laughs> On this side, it just looks terrifying. Ah, oh, death, and everyone's angry. And then you just go through the cross, you just cru get crucified with Christ. And like, wow, there's a lot of bliss here. <laughs> a lot of life here. The angels are all there, the saints, you know, heaven, you know? <laughs> and then you can make it on earth as it is in heaven as you just live out of your spirit in Christ. And uh, so, in this uh, vision, uh, my friend was getting prayer and he just falls to the ground. He's laughing. He's, he's struggled with a religious spirit his whole life and I was shocked to see him on the ground just laughing so intensely, tears coming out of his eyes. And I've never seen him take a courtesy fall, a courtesy laugh, nothing courtesy. This was 100% this was God. And as he's going into an experience with God, I went into an experience with God. I had this vision and I saw this door and I saw a little tiny thin shallow puddle like this, this thin. And then God spoke to me without words. He said, Chris, that's all you know of me is just that little puddle. It's like a foot long, just a small little puddle at the bottom of this door. And I'm like, God, I could see through the door, but I couldn't see through the door. But I sensed behind that door is an ocean of God's love, ocean of revelation, ocean of, ocean of God's signs uh, that all point to him. <laughs> The wonder, the awe, the mystery of being revealed in Christ Jesus. The, like just behind that door. All I have to do is go through that door 
I mean, I've only tasted this tiny little puddle, puddle that slipped underneath the door, and I've been seeing angels having heavenly experiences, walking the prophetic, prophesying over people, praying for the sick. They get, I mean, but there's that's all I've tasted, God? What do you mean? How do I get open that door? And I, I went on this pursuit for such a long time. I did not know how to open that door until he revealed it to me one time in a meeting during worship. <laughs> I was like, God, like, how do I get into more deeper waters? This is such a shallow walk that I have with you and I thought it was so deep. <laughs> There's so much more. And then I was, I was, I think I was praying for someone. I can't remember. I was in this worship meeting or something like that. And then I saw the key and I went into the door and it opened the door. And I realized that the key is faith. Simple as that. We must believe that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He measures our diligence on how we seek him, not passively, but intently. There's a difference between passively seeking God and intently seeking God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength. All of your being. I mean, because I passively seek Him all day long. I have the audio Bible going on. I throw on sermons. I, you know, I throw, you know, I throw little prayers here and there. I pray in tongues. And I, I'm washing the dishes. I have my affection set upon Him. And then there's really focused, intent times when I like for when I just grab my guitar and I worship Him without distraction. I lay on my bed and I hold my heart and I'm just communing with Him on the bed. And I wake up and I'm just like, I just need him. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be sitting in the toilet, <laughs> just reading the Bible, commute. Like, God, what does this mean? Uh, it's like intent. Not just passively reading the Bible, not just passively like you know, hoping God speaks to me one day or put on a video and maybe the anointing. It's like there's an intent to diligently seeking him. It's like, I have to see you. I have to see your face. I have to be changed from glory to glory. There has, I have to go through the door. Because the passive thing is good, but it's not great. <laughs> you know, the knowledge of good and evil is still good, but it's still death. I'm not saying that passively seeking God is death. I'm just saying that there's more. There's a depth. You know, the reward is with Him. It's like, how much do we truly want Him? Our time, how we spend our time shows us how hungry we are for God. Maybe it's just once an hour, like one hour per week. Maybe it's three hours per week. Maybe it's uh, seven hours a day. Maybe it's like 24 seven a day. I don't know anybody who's like that, but I'm sure they're on the earth. <clears throat> probably don't even have a body anymore. They're probably, <laughs> you know, just like Jesus can walk right through the crowd. You know, they're going to arrest him, you know, on his very first day of ministering. Like this day, the scripture is fulfilled in years, and they're gonna they're gonna throw him off a cliff. This raging mob, and he just, just he just passed right through them. The scripture says he passed through them. You know, in the natural mind, that means like, oh, everyone's like, okay, here comes Jesus. Let's just make a path for him to go through. But he passed through them. <laughs> if you want a, something to go through something, it actually goes through something. You know, if you can walk through doors, oh, yeah. no one can kill him until it, it was the time because when he said to Pilate you know whatever <sighs> we just need the anointing we need to have the door we need to go through the door and just lock ourselves in the holy of holies with him and stay there as long as we can because that's where we're changed from glory to glory like John just going from glory to glory, dimension to dimension, height to height, vision to vision, encounter to encounter, tree of life. We need the tree of life. The knowledge of good and evil, it's just, it looks so, make, it has the appearance to make you look wise with your Bible knowledge, but it doesn't change your heart. Actually, it might even change your heart. It might make you religious Pharisee that's, you know, they denied the very word of God that spoke to them. The living word of God. Because the dead letter, it always has something, it has pride, it wants to fight the spirit. It's not subject to the spirit, neither indeed can it be. <laughs> Romans 8. The natural mind is enmity against God, it's hatred. It wants to constantly crucify the anointing over and over and over again. That's why it has to be crucified with Christ. 
so that we can have life more abundantly. Oh, so that door is open through faith. You know, you, there's, there's, there's like almost like an expectancy that you get to meet with God. It's like, well, I'm in the presence of God 24-7. Good for you. I wish I was there. I'm not there yet. I've heard people that say that. I was like, you mean, how do you go from glory to glory if you're constantly at one steady place of glory? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a comprehension for that. I mean, like where the radiation, you can't even get off the floor sometimes. It's so thick and so, so just the weight of his glory just pins you to the floor. And all you can do is laugh and cry and be in awe and wonder. Like, there's this one pose that I have. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, it's I go into this 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 state, and then I, I I meet with God in ways that are just like I don't know how to explain it. Just I'm in awe and wonder at God, and it's like kind of like this. <laughs> my mouth hangs open and my eyes go wide, and I'm just like my body's here, but I'm just like in awe and wonder before His throat. I don't know. If <laughs> That makes any sense. Oh, whatever. I probably just flew over someone's head. Uh, there's a place of just being in awe and wonder, and I like happened to me like like last week. I just listened to some guy's testimony on on how someone would walk into a, a, a factory and everyone would just get born again by carrying the presence. Charles Finney, I believe. And I just sat there with my mouth open. And I was, in, I was in this state of like faith. I was believing the words that I was hearing and then I could feel Holy Spirit. He came out of me. I used to feel like he would land on me. Sometimes he does. But this time he came right out of me and just flooded the place. Or maybe I was just aware of what was happening. You know, work out your salvation. I just felt God just coming out. I felt saved, healed and delivered. <laughs> My mind was getting renewed by the washing water of his words. Just everything felt so alive. Because everything was so alive. In him there's no shadow, no turning, no death, just life. And uh, it all started with just believing someone's testimony. I remember the you know the scripture where the where the disciples they were they went to the to the burial site of Jesus and uh, and uh, well the women went first and then the women went and told it's in Luke somewhere the women went and told the men and uh, they didn't believe the testimony of Jesus coming through the women who had seen him it was a true testimony of Jesus and that must have had the substance on it but there was so much unbelief and in shock and awe of what happened in those days that they did not believe their words and so then when Jesus appears to them, they didn't recognize him. That's what happens. That's what happens when the true Jesus, like the Spirit of Christ, he'll appear, but your heart is full of unbelief. You will not recognize him. You got to know him by the Spirit. You got to know him like the Pharisees didn't recognize him. They were in full in unbelief. Faith didn't come by hearing and hearing the word of God. They memorized it. But they didn't know the Word of God in the Spirit, because the Word of God is actually is Spirit. The true Word of God is Spirit. Because you can memorize the entire Bible and still deny Jesus Christ. That doesn't even mean you're saved if you memorize the entire Bible. you got to believe. <laughs> Remember it says in John chapter 1, to those who believe, to them He gave the power to become sons of God. John chapter 1. you got to believe. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And uh, those women, they expressed the testimony of Jesus and the disciples they did not believe. And Jesus said, oh, you, how, you're slow of heart to believe what's written, basically. And then he went over the scriptures, the prophets, and he, pro and he just, there was so much fire coming out of the true word of God that the disciples said, did not our hearts burn as he went over the scriptures with us and walk with us in the way? Man, that's what it is to walk with God. Your heart will be burning by the Word of God. And then it's, the Scripture said that, and Jesus opened their understanding that they could comprehend the Scriptures. It's when your heart is burning for the Word of God that the Scriptures come alive. 
It's like that burning bush. Moses sees a burning bush and then there's a voice speaking. The voice of God speaking through the bush. You know, he wants that burning bush in your heart. That flaming sword must go through your heart. Just, just put to death the deeds of the flesh. Flesh burns. God liked it when Noah gave a pleasing sacrifice. He was burning animals, you know, after the, after the flood. It was a pleasing smell. God likes the smell of burning flesh. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we can put the fragrance of Christ upon us. May your flesh be crucified. May your hearts be circumcised so we can hear the voice of the living God. Holy. Oh God, what were all those scriptures of the door? Before I pressed record, there were so many things about the door. I'm sure there's so many other parallels in, in, in the Bible and the scriptures and people's experiences of the door. I just felt the anointing coming through my body and it felt so good to have, you know, the King of Glory just pouring himself through his body. And it's not just for an, a, a select few. It doesn't even have, you don't have to be a pastor, a prophet, evangelist or anything like that. You can just be a regular person making YouTube videos. You can just be a regular believer. You don't have to have titles. The titles don't mean anything without the relationship anywhere. As I said thousands of times in my videos, I ask God, God, what is the, you know, how do I become this and how do I do this? What am I called to be? What's my office? Blah, 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 blah. You know, I see these pastors, I see these evangelists, I see these prophets, I see these apostles, I see these, you know, all these things in the Bible. What am I supposed to be? You know? And then it's like he was laughing at me and rebukes me with John chapter 10. And Jesus called his disciples unto him. Just the first few words. And Jesus called, huh, that word call jumped out to me. What's your calling? And Jesus called his disciples unto him. Then what? Well, obviously you have to hear his voice. Obviously you have to walk with him in a relationship. After he called his disciples unto him, then he gave them power to cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. Freely they received, freely they released the power of God. It's all through relationship. It's all through intimacy. It's all about walking with God. <clears throat> Where do you think all these bliss moments come from? It's just like you're just setting your affections on Him and you realize He is over, like head over heels in love with you and then you just floods your being and you're like, what? I've never felt this so loved and so secure, so safe. It's like, I don't want anything else out there. I just want everything who's here who's in here to pour through here out there because <laughs> out there is scary <laughs> in here it's just absolute perfect peace love joy I have all the patience in the world you know I just pull on him I depend upon him he's my strength because out there like man you can get confused so many different winds of doctrines of men and lying spirits and cults and everyone wants to murder Christ and that's why you just get strengthened with might in the inner man by eating the manna come down from heaven which is Jesus Christ himself and that's what God wanted them to eat the Israelites it's like but they just wanted to strengthen their flesh but he wanted to strengthen their spirit so they can comprehend him and to walk with him the promised land is walking with God. It doesn't matter where your earth suit is. Like I said earlier in the beginning of this video, you could be in a prison cell, but you could be more free than a pastor behind a pulpit. It's like you how much life of Christ is pouring through your heart and through your mind and even out your body. The prison cell doors might not open wide, but you're free on the inside by Christ. Where the Holy Spirit is Lord, there is freedom. Some of those pastors are bound up in adulterous relationships, fornication, you know, masturbation, uh, lust for money, imprisoning souls just so they can have money. It's not even about the gospel or the kingdom. It's just about getting their tithes and offerings. They don't, they don't want to offend anybody because there's they're, they're the family of tithers. If they lose their family of tithers, they're not depending upon God. They're depending upon man. I'm not saying all of them are. I'm just saying those are some of the things that pastors wrestle with. I even ask God, God, am I called to be a pastor? 
And one time, he, he, I, one thing I know that I am not a pastor. Because I'll tell people straight up truth. I won't water it down. I'll just like, they'll get so offended. And they do. A lot of tons of people get offended for telling, you know, you just tell someone the truth and they want to crucify you. Because <laughs> this pastor, I believe he wanted to make me a youth pastor in this church. And I was like, I was kind of troubled about it. Something didn't feel right. And so I went to God and God said, no, you just released the keys of the kingdom that I've given you to release and just share, share the, the scatter seed, share the nuggets of revelation with everyone. And then I started making these videos and just started sharing with, uh, well, actually I made these videos afterwards through another prophetic word. Of, uh, it was actually, no, he didn't even prophesy. I, God told me, well, this person was prophesying. I was going into a vision. I saw myself scattering seeds all over the world. And it's just like the nuggets. The, the simplicity of walking with Christ. Just your testimony of Jesus being the spirit of this This guy can do it. He can't even talk very good. I mean, th I think I can do it too. You know, I think I can walk with Jesus. <laughs> you know, people have made it so complicated. How do you walk with God? You love him with all your heart, your mind, your body, soul, and strength. And that's it. How do you walk with God? Set your affections on things above. That's it. Set them right on Christ. Where, you know, set your affections on Him. Just love Him. And He'll love the hell right out of you. Literally. So there's nothing left inside but heaven. The kingdom of God is within you. And uh, most of this stuff, all these, all these like 700 hours of videos, it's just always been about the same thing. <laughs> it's always been, it's just Jesus is amazing, man. We can walk with Jesus. And uh, nothing else matters. I mean, he'll put the things that matter to him in your heart. And then you'll pour into those things. You know, relationships matter to God. Of course he wants you to spend time with your family and not forsake them and just like get all religious and on your knees and start, you know, you know, <laughs> whatever. Oh, Jesus spent time with his disciples, but he would also go away into the mountains and spend time with his father. Jesus spent time with the masses, but he'd also go away and spend time with his father. Jesus would spend time, it didn't matter, the class of people. He spent time with the Pharisees. He'll spend time with like the, the everyday man, you know. He'll spend time with his disciples. He'll even spend time walking in the wilderness being tempted by the devil. Because <laughs> the Holy Spirit led him into there so he could be tempted in every way so that he could overcome every single temptation and we can overcome every single temptation in him. <laughs> and so... Yeah, so it's not all about being weird. It's really all the weird stuff. I don't know where I'll, I, I like weird, but I like glory weird. I don't like weird for being the sake of weird to be different. I just, I like the, I like the, it's so far beyond my mind and my comprehension and I'm getting hit with waves of glory that like this has to be God kind of weird. Like, you know, cherubim and seraphim, they have like six wings and you know, they're covering their faces and they're flying around putting coals on people. That's pretty weird. I like that. <laughs> you know, just getting sucked up from one dimension to another. And there's a big doorway there. It's like, come on, come through here. I'm going to show you some stuff. That's pretty weird. I like that kind of stuff because there's glory on it. And he starts going from glory to glory. He sees a mountain, 144,000. He sees the new heaven. You know, started, you saw hell, the, the, the lake of fire. And there's angels and 24 elders and God. And, you know, <laughs> just this worship scene going on in Revelation 5 and 6. And that stuff is weird. It must be interpreted through wisdom. You know, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the Antichrist, which the flesh has made it. <laughs> the last book is called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. And you want to see him? You got to see him through a pure burning heart where God's consuming fire. When he's consuming fire, it comes into your heart. He burns away the wood, the hay, the stubble, and just keep letting him con just consume all of your being. Just remembering some stuff right now. I don't know if I should talk about that. How much minutes we got here? Yeah, I guess we'll end it here. You know, the simplest thing of, the, of this whole video is the door is standing open in heaven. In Christ. He is the door. 
We can go through Jesus Christ. We can experience the living God. We can experience rivers of living water pouring through our innermost being when the kingdom of God is within us by inviting Christ into our lives and pushing everything that he despises out of our lives. Some Christians forget to do that because they've been taught a flesh gospel. <sighs> and uh, a lot of because a lot of pastors, like I said, they're they might be well-meaning, but they have the fear of men. They might be well-meaning, but they're absolutely deceived because they don't read the scriptures in the Holy Ghost. They just take one scripture and then they just twist it to fit what they want to believe. But I, I like to go through the entire Bible cover to cover, like, and then just switch translations because I want to. I want to like every every time I go through it, through it. Because I want to hear what the Spirit is saying. I don't want to form my own opinions. I want His opinion, which is truth. It's not even opinion. It's like, it's law. It's truth. And it sets us free when we believe it. Anyways. Uh, Holy Ghost, you want to add anything? Uh, thank you, Lord. God, I just thank you for your peace. I thank you for the presence of God in all of your people. I just ask that you would open up their hearts even wider and to pour your spirit through them, God, so it's on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you that we have access to you through the door of Jesus Christ. Thank you we can go through that curtain of the Holy of Holies being symbolic of his flesh that was torn, that we can be with you in an intimate place, in the inner chambers of our heart. When you pray, go into your innermost chamber to be alone with your Father, the scriptures say. So we can be with you in undistracted intimacy. God, I just thank you for all these keys. And I'm sure there was some nugget in there from someone. Oh. No one comes to the Father but through you. And so we're just going to come through you today just to be with our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for making Jesus Christ alive in our hearts and minds. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us every word that he's spoken. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for setting us on fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. Thank you, Jesus, for being the rock, shining revelation through our entire being to kill all the giants that try to try to lord over us and crush us and put us in fear and put us in chains and shackles. Thank you, Jesus, for setting us free. It is for the freedom of the fruit of the Holy Ghost in our lives that you have set us free. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for sending Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for sending us into all the world, to be the light of the world, to shine you into all the world so that it's a brighter place. It will make all the crooked paths straight. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God, for the reality of the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. We surrender our lives to Jesus. And Jesus comes freely, freely through our lives, surrender to him. Give you all the glory, give you all the honor, give you all the praise, give you all the thanks, give you all of our stuff. <laughs> oh God, give you all of our time. That's such a dangerous prayer, but it's all yours, God. Remind us when our minds slip and our hearts slip into anything else but you. Just remind us to put it back upon you so we can enjoy life more abundantly. Human life is death compared to the life of God pouring through our hearts and minds. It's so wonderful, Lord. And uh, thank you for inviting us into your bliss. Thank you for inviting us into the circle. Of, I'm getting so locked right now. God, I just thank you that for the ability to thank you. Thank you for saving us, God. Thank you for washing us clean through the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you for washing our feet to make our paths straight, to walk in the washing water of the word. Thank you that there, your lamp is shining through us. Your word is a lamp to our feet, God, so we can walk in your word and fulfill your words. 
God, I just thank you for the mind of Christ, that we don't have to be unstable in all the ways of the world, but we have the mind of Christ, connected in Christ, fully complete in Christ. God, I just thank you for the hands, that you can pour your anointing through them. Thank you for our mouths, that you can speak through them. Thank you for our hearts, that can be burning with the living word of God. Thank you for your gospel shoes of peace, that we can walk in your peace. Thank you for the breastplate of your righteousness. It's not our righteousness. We throw that filthy rag away, and we just receive your righteousness as a perfect gift. God, I thank you for taking the crown of thorns, so we can have the crown of life, the mind of Christ. God, Father, thank you so much for inviting us through Jesus Christ to be with you, to hear your voice, to be strengthened with might in the inner man. Thank you for the manna come down from heaven. Thank you for angels' food, for spiritual food. Thank you, God, that we have a deep relationship with you. And the depth of our relationship with you depends upon our hunger and thirst for righteousness and our pursuit of you. Our time shows how hungry we are. Our depth of our focus shows how hungry we are. So God, I ask for the gift of hunger to be upon everyone. I ask for the depth of hunger that we've never experienced before, that we can't even do human things anymore. We're so obsessed and possessed by the living God and the hunger for your righteousness and your kingdom that we can't even function anymore. Like the priests in the old covenant, they were just worshiping and they could perform no priestly duties because of the glory cloud that poured, like came into, the, into that atmosphere. Let us be so focused on you, so surrendered to you, that we can't even do human things anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let your presence increase. Let the glory increase. Let Christ increase. As we decrease, let Christ increase through us. As we are fully crucified, let the life of God pour through our surrendered lives. Let the, let the mind of Christ pour through our our surrendered minds. You let the body of Christ, not the rock of Christ, just pour through your body today, God. Kill all the deception, all the lies. So we shall know the truth and walk in the truth and trample on serpents and scorpions by living in the truth up here in heavenly places in Christ. Hallelujah. God bless your face with His grace. <laughs>